All right, we're going to be doing one of my favorite lessons today. We're going to be talking about hand size and height. You'll notice I have a picture here of our president, Donald Trump. Regardless of your political stance, I think we can all agree he uses his hands a lot when he talks and he seems to have abnormally small hands. Today we're going to see if there is a direct correlation between height and hand size and if his hands are actually kind of small for his body. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, I got some information. He is six foot three, so he's 75 inches tall. And his hand size is seven and a quarter inch. How did I get this? If you Google it, you will find that in Trump Towers, they have an imprint of his hand in the lobby and someone actually measured it. There are multiple sources confirming this, that his hand size is seven and a quarter inches when you measure up from top of his wrist to the top of his middle finger. So what have I done? In, tip in uh, previous years, I always take simple random samples of the United States population. And that simple random sample just happens to always end up being every one of my statistics class. How does that happen? Well, simple random samples mean anyone and any possible group can be selected. So it just happens to be my statistics class every year. Who knows? All right, so we have height and hand size here. I'm gonna share with you the heights and hand sizes from last year's statistics class. If you wanna throw yours in here too while we're doing this, feel free, because then you can see how things might change up a little bit. So we have all these heights and we have hand sizes. They create ordered pairs and it's important to keep them together. So I'm gonna establish height as my explanatory variable and hand size is my Y, my response variable. Why? Because we want to see if height explains hand size. So that means height's going to be X, Y is going to be hand size. So if you want to take a moment, maybe even pause this, you can enter the heights in the list one and the hand sizes in the list two on your TIs. I will show you what I did. I'm using a virtual calculator here. There's some trial and error, so please you know, bear with me. It's easier than filming my TI while I do this. So if you go to stat, edit, You'll notice I already made list one, all the heights, list two, all the hand sizes, and I made sure that they lined up. Now, someone asked me a question about how you get the standard deviation of X, standard deviation of Y, because, I don't know, in some cases you might, I guess you could end up doing, calculating R by hand. I do not recommend it. Your calculator does all this work for you. Linear regression is a lot of calculations. I would never hold you responsible for finding them by hand, but if you're curious, here it is. Click stat, go to the calc, one variable stats, make sure it's list one, in this case it is, I hit enter. You'll notice I get my average and I get my standard deviation of X for list two. I'm gonna to go to edit, and instead I'm gonna do second for list two, and then, oops. Again, I'm telling you, there's some errors involved here. I'm still getting the hang of this. Get out of here. That's what I want to do. All right. Clear. Try again. Stat. Calc. Now, actually, I'm going to go here first. I'm going to highlight list two. That's important. Now I'll do one variable stats. And I should get everything I need here. Nope, it didn't end up working. Uh, let me try one more time. And if not, I mean, it's not, I'll be honest, it's not super important for what we're doing. And you should be able to do it on your calculator. For one variable stats, all right, see how it's giving me list one? I'm going to choose the list two option. Enter, calculate, boom. All right, so I get my average hand size, and I get my standard deviation, which would help you if you want to calculate R by hand. I really, again, I don't recommend it, but if you're intent on getting comfortable with this formula, you can plug the values in as needed and calculate by hand, see how close you get. What I ended up doing was I ended up just do, using the linear regression function on my calculator to get there. And that's the way I recommend doing it. Less chance for error. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to click stat, edit, go actually go to calc, excuse me. I'm going to go to linreg A plus BX. B is going to represent our slope, A, R, Y intercept. And list one, list two, everything looks good. Calculate. Excellent, and you will notice I already have this on my knowability page. So if you enter this in, you should be getting these values. If you get something different, I'd say double check to make sure you entered in all the heights, make sure the hand sizes are lined up, or heck, you might be getting something different if you include your own height and hand size. If that's the case, then don't worry about it. I mean, you might get something a little different. 
So what I did here is I wrote out the formula y equals a plus bx and I plugged in my values. This is never enough. Always write it in context. You notice I did that below. Hand size represents y. So I have hand size equals and then 0 0.59, that'll be the hand size you're starting with. You're starting at 6 tenths of an inch. What we expect is, remember, y would be up here. X is down here, just like for slope. So change y over change in x. That we expect a tenth of an inch in hand size increase for every inch of height. And then you multiply that times the height. And then that should give you the hand size here. And that's what this is all about. It predicts. This is a prediction. That's what linear regression is about. It predicts. We're looking to see if there's some sort of linear correlation going on here. You notice that I wrote, we predict that starting at a hand size of about 6 tenths of an inch or 0.59, hand size will increase about a tenth of an inch for every height, inch of height that increases. That's our prediction here. We're going to see if this works out. Now, I'm going to look at my values here, my R squared and R in particular. Now, R tells me the strength of my line. Now, you will notice here that I have a positive value. I have a positive value, and it's about 0.82. I would classify that as a strong, positive, linear correlation between hand size and height. I think that's important. Now, if it was negative, then I could say it was a, neg it was a strong, negative linear correlation. In my experience, I usually go like between 0.8 and 1. I call that strong. I'd say between like 0.65 to 0.8-ish. You're talking like moderately strong. I'd say like 0.5 to 0.65 is like a moderate. And then anything below 0 0.5 is like weak. That's what I would say. Now, it's open to interpretation a little bit, but in general, I'd say 0.8 to 0.1 is strong. 0.65 to 0.8, I even might even go with 0.7 here as moderately strong. I might go with 0 0.5, 0 0.65 is maybe like somewhat strong or maybe even just moderate positive correlation. And then anything below 0.5, I would say, is weak. And I mean, again, I mean, if it's negative, then it, you just change it to negative. That's all. But so I'm going to say there's a strong positive linear correlation. Now that 68, that 0.68, our R squared, what that tells me is the percentage of values that are accounted for by this least squares regression re equation or this line. So I'd say about 68% of our data values can be accounted for by this least squares regression. I believe I wrote that. Yep. 68% of our data follows our least squares regression or is explained by our least squares regression. And you'll notice I made a scatter plot below. You can do this on your calculator. I'll try and walk you through it. I've had issues using this app and getting here. But let's see, I'll try again. If I don't get here, well, you know what it looks like anyway. So then what you would do is you would go to stat plot. So second y equals... And you'll notice I have X is uh, L1, Y is L2, and then on your calculator, you should have, you should hit the zoom button and it would give you the picture. I don't have that here, which is why I struggle a little bit. When I've been doing graph, I haven't exactly been getting it. But you'll notice I do have the picture right here. I know your textbook walks you through how to do it. I think I shared some videos too on how to get here on your TI, but... If you'll notice, what we like is, first of all, you see a little dog here on there. I apologize for that. I have a bunch of values right near this line. That's how I can tell I have a pretty strong correlation here. If it was weak, I would not expect to see that many values. As a matter of fact, you probably wouldn't be able to get much of a line out of it. I have weak correlation. It might look something like this. I might have dots like here. You know, I wouldn't be able to make a real line out of it. But since they're clustering together and I can make a line, I can say it's, I can tell it's pretty strong here. And you'll notice I made a residual plot as well. Now, what are residuals? Residuals are the difference between what you see and what you expect. So like right here, the distance from like, let's say that, oh boy, that's really big. From, oh Lord, I gotta fix this. 
from here to here, that distance right in here, that's the residual. The distance from what you expect to what you see. This would be a residual as well. This would be a residual. This would be a residual. Now this line, essentially, your calculator is figuring out, okay, where can we put a line that will give us the least amount of residual space for all of our data points? That's why I never really recommend doing this by hand because your calculator does a lot of work to get here. So ultimately, you're getting the smallest lines possible from these data points to the actual least squares regression line. So we want small residuals. Let's see how our precedent fits into this. And that's where this, we can have some fun with this. Because we've established that it's pretty, we've noticed a pretty strong linear correlation here. Let's see how our precedent falls. So we're going to take his height and we're going to plug it in here. So we'll take y, what hand size we expect. So we're going to do 0 0.59 plus again 0 0.97 over 1, or 0 0.097 over 1. We're going to multiply that times 75. We'll see what happens. I'm going to plug it in. Hopefully you're doing the same thing. Let's see. We're going to have 0 0.0, 0 0.59. Oh, boy. Here's what we get. We would expect the hand size of the President of the United States right now to be about really close to about 8 inches. And from what we see here... His actual hand size is seven and a quarter inches. So we can actually figure out the residual here. What we see minus what we expect. So we see 7.25. I'm just going to do that down here. Minus 7.865. And you will notice that you have a bit of a residual here. That's what we're talking about here. Residual is the difference between what you uh, see and what you expect. So... It's kind of cool because we're able to see that based on this, he does have pretty small hands. And you know what? Even if we could even throw him into our data here, see what happens when we plug it in. Let's do that. I'm going to go to my calculator here. Let me get out of here. So I'm going to go to, let's see. All right, walk me through this. All right, edit. I'm going to go to my list. This one, I'm going to enter in his height of 75 inches. And then I'm going to enter in his hand size of about 7.25. And now let's try to figure this out. Let's see what happens when we do a, run a linear regression on this. Oh, okay. You'll notice we get some differences here. A changes, B changes, as well as R and R squared. Our line gets less strong here. Instead of getting that point, what did we get before? I'm going to take a screenshot of this so I have it. I know 68% of our data was accounted for. Now only 61% of our data is accounted for by this. And then if we go up here, you'll notice 82%. We had an 82 here for an R value, 0.82, close to 0.83. And that's gone down to 0.79. So we can see that if we include the president here, I mean, I'd have to kind of approximate where it might fall. But his would probably fall somewhere around in here. And you'll notice that's a pretty influential value here. It's going to, it would drag our line down a bit. And ultimately what ends up happening, it'll drag the line down a bit. That's how you can tell if a point is influential. And ultimately you don't like to use least squares regression lines to extrapolate too much. You'll notice here, like if we went with someone really tall or we had to, went with someone really small, it might not be super accurate, even though I will say this. When I used this equation last year for my three-year-old niece, I entered in her height to see if I predicted her hand size. We actually did a pretty good job of doing it. So based on the fact that we have a pretty high R value and R squared value, we can say that, you know, we can't, we can't say there's causation here, but we can say there's a pretty strong positive linear correlation between height and hand size and that actually our president it does not, you know, he does not fall into what we would expect here. So it's just kind of having a little bit of fun with using some real data and seeing how it works within the least squares regression line here. So if you want, as I said, throw your height and hand size in. See how it changes the R value. See how it changes the R squared. See if it makes maybe our line a bit stronger or see if it makes it a little bit weaker. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of perspective on how we can use least squares regression in uh, some real life context and have a little bit